The drums here in GarageBand are indeed super cool, but there's one thing that can be a little bit tricky, and that is if you want to cut off or choke a cymbal at the end of a cymbal hit. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where I'm going to show you a cool trick here in GarageBand using automation. If you've got some drums in your track and you want them to cut off and not resonate and reverberate over the top of your track, this is what you need to do. We're here in my song called Never To Blame. I'm here in the track view. And if we come towards the end here, what you'll notice is we've got a single cymbal hit here. So we have our drummer track playing drums throughout. And then at the end, we want this one last cymbal hit to match the guitars at the very end. Let's play the end of this song so you know what we're talking about. And then I'll show you how we can get this done. I'm never to blame. So there you go. It's not terrible, but we don't want this cymbal crash at the end to keep resonating like that. If you've got a quiet part of a song or you're at the end of your song and you want to what's called choke the cymbal, well, we don't have a drummer here that can actually grab the cymbal. We need to find a way to do this and we're going to do it with automation. So let's zoom on in so we can do some surgical precision on this drum. Now you notice I use the drummer track, but to get the actual cymbal hit, I needed to add in a separate drum track. A good tip if you're trying to get some more control, use the drummer for the song and then use drums, the standard drums. And if you want to learn all about drums and drummer and how to use these, check the description. There's a heap more videos here on the channel all about how to get started with drums. Let's assume you've got your drum track here now. We're going to tap right here on the drums and then we're going to tap on automation. And this is going to bring up our automation lane. All we need to do from here is slide the slider in the top left here to turn on automation and then add some automation points. I'm going to add one point directly after here, after the hit, and then one a little to the right. Let's zoom in. Not do that. we hit undo in the top left. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at this. So if we zoom in on that, what we now need to do is turn off in the top left, turn off our automation, grab one of these and drag it on down and then grab this one and position it just after the end of the cymbal hit. Let's solo this cymbal hit now and take a listen to what actually happens now. Just zoom out a little bit. Let's take a listen to what this cymbal sounds like now. Okay, so it's a little bit too quick, isn't it? So we might need to just give it a little bit more room to breathe. So we just grab this end one, bring that out. That's our zero volume. Grab this one out and put it around about there maybe. Let's try this now. If we zoom out again, whoop, we've done some weird zooming. Uh, let's hit play on this one and that might be more like it. Let's bring this back into our mix, shall we, and see what this sounds like with our automation. So we'll take the solo off and play the end of the track here. Oh, never to blame. That's sounding better. So that's the sort of thing we can do. If you don't want that resonating sound, let's just turn the automation back off again. This is what it sounds like. Well, actually, that's going to put the volume all the way down to zero, isn't it? Uh, we'll come back here. We'll play this one with the volume back up, up to there. So this is what it would sound like without that automation. Blame. So maybe that's the effect you're going for. But if you want that ending effect to just sort of finish off there, we'll turn our automation lines back on here. Now let's play this one at the end here. It sounds like this. I'll never to blame. And yeah, what we could do also, we could do some better automation on some of our other tracks because they're kind of resonating a little bit further as well with the delay and the reverb. But it's a good, clean way of getting that. And you notice here that we can actually make this, the fade out there. If you want it to be even more precise with its cutoff, you can grab this one and bring it across until it's like a vertical line like that one. And now it's going to do the same thing, but it's going to cut off almost instantly. Just take a listen to this one. So to me, that sounds a little bit unnatural because even a drummer, even your best drummers can grab and choke the cymbal. It's not going to be completely. Uh, it's kind of going to have a little bit of a roll off. So I tend to just use a little bit more like that. Now you can use this with any other instruments. You can use it with your drums in the middle of your track. You can use it anywhere you like, but your automation curves there are super handy and super useful. If you've got a sound that you don't want to be there anymore, you want to cut the sound down to zero, you can bring it back up again with the same method. Hope you found this useful. Once again, more videos down in the description if you want to learn more about drums and GarageBand in general. Until next time, I'll see you on the next video.